Now I'd like to introduce our panel members, if you'd like to come up. Uh, their collective professional experience can speak to the issue of advanced directives from numerous advantage points, um, legal, medical, professional, political, and spiritual. So I'd like to call up our panel, um, Chaplain John Eamon from the University of Pennsylvania Health System, Pastoral Care Department, it's at the end. Stella Hyde, who's volunteer president of the AARP Pennsylvania Executive Council. Gail Inderwees, I saw you earlier, there you are. Executive Director of Keystone Hospice. Dr. Dwayne Kirksey, who is Assistant Professor of Medicine at Temple University. And Sherry Odenheimer, who is a partner with Blank Rome. There are detailed biographies of all of our panelists in uh, your program booklet. And you'll also have a chance, I think, afterwards to, to speak personally. Well, let's go to our, our first question. Why is it important to have an advanced directive? And I think maybe Stella Hyde, maybe you can give us an overview of that. Well, let me tell you that um, I have a perspective from personal. About two years ago, I had to institute my mother's advanced directives. But I also am a nurse. Uh, I'm a retired professor of nursing, so I've been a nurse for almost 40 years. And so I had looked at a lot of things uh, and seen a lot of things happen. And so when my mother got to be um, of um, probably in her 70s, middle 70s or later, uh, I talked to her and, and we decided um, that she needed to do something legally to make sure that her wishes were well known. And we had had this discussion and maybe it was easier for me than it is for a lot of people because of uh, being a nurse. Uh, and I had seen so many difficult situations occur. So we had the discussion. My father had been dead a great number of years at that point in time. She had been a widow very, a very long time. And so we went to an elder attorney, uh, and we sat down, and we had the discussion. Um, we had uh, discussed it prior to that with her primary care physician, who is a very good friend of mine as well. Uh, and so after all the discussions, we decided that this was indeed what she needed to do. Uh, I am so glad that we did this because two years ago, my mother at the age of 89 and a half, who had been living alone and taking care of herself, and other than uh, you know arthritis, was really very healthy. She got flu and became very ill very rapidly. Uh, she was in the hospital, uh, was unable to speak for herself, and we had the advanced directives in place. Um, I was her health care proxy. Uh, I had the power of attorney to speak for her health care. Um, you know, it's very difficult to let someone go. I knew what my mother had asked for. I knew what she had wanted done. We had discussed a lot of this. We had talked at different points in time. And she would come to me and she would say, explain to me what it really means if I say yes to having a feeding tube in. Or if I said no to this before we went to the... Um, to the uh, elder attorney, and I would recommend that you absolutely make sure that someone is very capable of explaining all of these yes and no responses that they're going to give when they fill out their advanced directives. So she knew what all of these different things meant, and she had made her choices, uh, filled out the paperwork, and um, she became, as I said, she became very ill very rapidly, and um, she was not doing very well, but you know, you don't want to let them go. And so uh, we, she had said yes to IVs, so we started the IVs. I was feeding her, uh, and because she, she had said no to a feeding tube, but I was feeding her uh, her meals and that type of thing. And, and uh, you know, I had hoped that she was obviously going to get better, uh, that it was not going to uh, end in a sad situation. But suddenly her lung collapsed. And they called in a specialist. And with this collapsed lung, now he wanted to insert chest tubes. He wanted to do a uh, type of procedure to reinflate the lung and uh, assure that it would not happen again and institute some things that really uh, I was beginning to feel very uncomfortable with. And um, it just happened I am one of five siblings. Uh, but by the same token, I'm the only one that lived there. You know, I'm the one that ended up being mom's caretaker because I lived close. Everyone else was scattered all the way, as far away as Puerto Rico and Hawaii. 
So luckily we had this in place. They all knew about it. Uh, they had said, you know, when I called them, I said, this is what they want to do. They said, you know what she wanted. The decision is yours. So when we got to this point, we had no arguments, which made it very, you know, much more pleasant for everyone, I'm sure my mother included, um, because at the last she told us all goodbye, she was aware um, of that type of a thing. But we just said no, this procedure was too much. She had not asked for this type of thing. She did not want this type of uh, extended, um, you know, care, uh, this type of procedures done. She had asked to just be, uh, you know, let go. And so at 89 and a half, we told them to keep her comfortable. It's the best thing I ever did, mm -hmm. truly. You need to do this. This is extremely important, not only for you as the person left behind, but as you as the person experiencing it. Uh, it was many years ago that I told my husband, uh, I came home from work one day after taking care of a patient and sitting with them and holding their hand while they died. And I said, I don't want you to do this, this, and this for me ever. If I get to that point, you please let me go. These are hard decisions, very much so. But it is extremely important to make these decisions and make these decisions while people can talk, while they can tell you what they want and really express their feelings and ask their questions so that everyone feels good about the final decision and saying, just let them go. Thank you. Oh, Stella, very, very effective. Very, I think touches on so many of the aspects that we're really grappling with. Would anybody really like to add to that on why it's important? Uh, yes, I would. Um, I Gail and Louise. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to add to what you're talking about in the sense that I think it's really important that people really look at their advanced directives if you happen to have one. How many people in this room happen to have one? I'm sorry. Okay. So less than half. Um, those of you that do, how many have looked at it in the last two years? Less than half of that. One of the things I, I've seen over the years, and I've seen thousands of people die, unfortunately, um, is that this is a, a typical scenario that people get into, but how we view ourselves now at one age is 10 years from now is going to be very different. And also, I really think it's really important that we also look at that person. What does that person represent to us? Um, and, and whether or not it be our mom or our child or whatever, those pieces influence our decisions about letting go or not letting go. And how we saw ourselves at 40, and I see a lot of 40-year-olds anymore dying, may be very different how we see ourselves at 89. At the same time, we may want someone who we give adorable power of attorney to because maybe we want that IV, but we want someone to say we don't want that IV at another point. The piece that I really want to stress here is, is that A, you should be looking at your will, your living will, your power of attorney every five years, minimum. Um, the other piece is that you need to look at who is your durable power of attorney and make sure that they can really fulfill that for you. Because I've seen it work in the reverse. Um, and I'll personally give you an example. I was probably the worst person in the world, and I do this for a living, to be the power of attorney for my grandmother. I loved her more than anything else in the world. I was incapable of letting her go. My grandmother was wise enough to know that and put my sister in charge. And at the end, I wanted to do all kinds of life-saving stuff. And I've been there with many families trying to help them make that other decision like Willow talks about. And I couldn't. And so you really need to look back and look at, reevaluate at all times and make sure that all family members know what your wishes are. And if you have somebody that you really are some like in here concerned whether or not they can fulfill it, Please do yourself and the rest of your family a favor. Do not make them your power of attorney. Um, with that, I'll shut up because I'm Italian. I go on all day. <laughs> <laughs>